reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the area of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and cried, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. His disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, please help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed that very hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And so, Lord, grant that through the spoken word and through the written word, we may behold the living word, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If you were to ask uh, ten, ten preachers uh, or biblical scholars to explain what is going on in today's reading from St Matthew, um, I reckon there's a good chance that you would end up with ten different answers. There are um, so many angles to consider. Um, the good news, uh, you may be pleased to hear, is that I am not going to consider all of them this morning. <laughs> Perhaps the first thing we should note about this reading from Matthew is that it is an important passage, not least because it is the only record we have of Jesus uh, travelling outside Jewish territory. Matthew tells us, uh, chapter 15, verse 21, Jesus went away to the area of Tyre and Sidon, uh, an area which uh, is now part of the country of Lebanon. Jesus knew that he was approaching the end of his mission, um, his public ministry, uh, his life on this earth, and soon he would travel on to Caesarea Philippi where he would ask his disciples uh, the crunch question, who do you really believe I am? And thereafter everything else would be building up to his crucifixion um, outside the walls of Jerusalem on Good Friday. So why did Jesus go to the Gentile region of Tyre and Sidon? Uh, it seems likely he went there in search of some peace and quiet, to get away from the crowds and the pressure to preach and perform miracles. And of course his disciples, that motley bunch, they go with him and they find themselves in foreign country outside their comfort zone. And while they are there, Matthew tells us that they are interrupted on their uh, restful uh, retreat by a local Canaanite woman. And she cries out to Jesus, uh, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is severely possessed by a demon. 
exactly what is wrong with her daughter, we don't know. But in the ancient world, um, many forms of illness were blamed on evil spirits. And clearly she is very upset, very desperate for help. Now this is where you could say that things begin to get interesting. And it has to be said that neither Jesus uh, nor his disciples come across in a very positive light, at least um, to begin with. At first, Jesus seems to uh, want to ignore her. And the grumpy disciples say to their master, send her away, for she is crying after us. Basically, they're saying to Jesus, tell her to sod off. <laughs> They don't want anything to do with this woman. You know, the Jews and, and the, the Canaanites historically were, were enemies. Uh, and they don't want anything to do with her. She's outside of their, their culture, their religion. They assume that Jesus has the same opinion as them. And we don't have time to go into uh, all of his words. And to be honest, his reply doesn't really help because he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And what does that mean? It means that Jesus saw his primary focus in re reaching out to his fellow Jews. Um, we've seen that in, in, in the other Gospels. Um, but Jesus, on this occasion, seems to want to ignore her but he doesn't actually ignore her. He doesn't agree with the attitude of his disciples, if we consider his response a little bit further. Um, if he'd agreed with their position, which is exclusive and even racist, um, he would have done what they asked and sent the woman away. But he doesn't do that. What he does do is he starts talking to her. He begins a conversation with her. And that conversation will eventually lead to, to growth, to spiritual growth for the woman and, importantly, for his disciples who watch every move Jesus makes, who listen to every word Jesus speaks. His words to her, as I say, we don't have time to consider them this morning, they are indeed harsh. But she is a feisty woman. And what we see is how she gains the respect of Jesus. We don't know how or why she recognised Jesus as the Messiah. But her faith in him is rewarded and her daughter is made well. That's what we might call the headline story of this encounter. But the bigger picture, the bigger picture, the, the overarching theme that comes through is surely the breaking down of barriers. Mindful that time is short, Jesus is desperately trying to teach his disciples an important lesson here. Because they are going to be the ones who very soon will be given the responsibility, the mission, to carry his gospel and to proclaim to everyone, Jew and Gentile, the coming of God's kingdom on earth. Over recent weeks, as we have begun to emerge from the darkness and uh, the weirdness of the last year, when so much of normal life including church life, has been suspended. Um, perhaps like you, I've been thinking quite a lot about the future. And thanks to the internet and things like Zoom, and I know many of you were Zoom virgins, but are now, <laughs> <laughs> are now getting to grips with it, um, I've certainly had opportunities to talk to a variety of people, including clergy colleagues, 
uh, and many others, about how we go about rebuilding the church. And the new slogan, which you may have heard for the Church of England, is build back better. <laughs> build back better. I wonder who got paid for coming up with that. <laughs> Building back is, is surely what we, we want to do. Um, and as we begin to look to the future, as a faith community, as a church, I think there's something in today's gospel that we need to kind of pick up and carry with us as we, as we seek to um, navigate the challenges ahead. And it's this. Read that gospel passage from Matthew. What comes through to me most of all is how good Jesus is at listening. Jesus listened to the Canaanite woman and he met her where she was. And we see how barriers of, of race, uh, sex, creed, did not matter to him. Not only do we want people to begin to come back to church, we all want to see new people in church. And therefore we should never be like those grumpy disciples when approached by a stranger. So many of them remind me, do you remember Victor Meldrew? <laughs> yeah. If like Jesus, we, we listen to people, really listen to people, and really make the effort to meet them where they are, even though they may often be rather different from us, then I believe our church will have a bright future. As, as my late grandmother often reminded me when I was growing up, she would say to me, uh, remember my boy, God gave you one mouth and two ears, so you should listen twice as much as you speak. Amen. <laughs>